Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are super excited to introduce you the first knife that actually cuts its emissions. So in this video, we're first gonna learn about these kitchen knives. We're then gonna do a full life cycle assessment on them to understand how much CO2 is embedded in them. And eventually we're gonna ask our friend Thomas from Joan Plasto to redesign them to reduce as much as possible the amount of CO2 that is embedded in each of them. And to bring to the world a knife that actually cuts its emissions. As you can see from the nasty chimney behind me, it's 2024 and global emissions are still on the rise. Plus, global population is set to hit 10 billion by 2050, which means that more people will need more products that will generate more CO2. And one of the many things that men needed since the beginning of times were knives. Knives have been a great companion of mankind since its early days, helping us to evolve through the centuries. As mankind evolved, so did the loyal knives they carried with them. And nowadays, some of the most common knives out there are these ones. They go by the name of table knife, utility knives, steak knives, and more. But the idea is the same. Simple, utilitarian knives for everyday life. And I don't know about you, but these knives have surrounded me for most of my life. A home, a friend, a restaurant, and even a camping site. There are two things that I absolutely adore about these knives and one thing that I totally hate. Of course, the number one thing that I totally love about these knives is their functionality, which is basically unbeatable. They work super well. Anything coming your way, you can carry with them. Fruits, veggies, bread, cheese. If you still eat meat in 2024, you can also cut meat. Basically, anything you throw in at them is gonna get cut. So in the knives world, cutting tomatoes seems to be the holy grail of sharpness. And these knives cut tomatoes like butter. And today we have Anna here with us that she's gonna demonstrate this for us. So yeah, as expected, this was so easy. These knives work so well and you kind of wanted to have more products designed this well. The second thing that I absolutely love about these knives is the fact that you can clean them on your denims. Or can you? Okay, I think we can all agree that these knives work fantastically. However, there's also a bunch of things that are not that great about them. Starting, of course, with the biggest issue of them. You guessed it, the handle, of course, because these things are usually dull and boring, coming in black or gray or red, but most importantly, because they are made from new virgin plastic. Boring! And honestly, I can barely fathom how many of these knives I use in my 35 years of age and how many of them are actually laying at the bottom of an ocean or maybe in some faraway landfill like this one. Now, to get a better idea of the impact of these knives, we reach out to Francesco, a life cycle assessment expert that will help us to understand the environmental cost embedded in these knives. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Francesco. Can you help me today to understand how much CO2 is embedded in each of these knives? Hey everyone, I'm Francesco and I'm an LCA expert. LCA stands for Life Cycle Assessment and is a method used to calculate the impact of an object or a process throughout its life cycle. From extraction to waste management, the main goal is to quantify resources consumption and emission or other associated environmental impacts. With this framework called Cradle to Grave, we are thinking in a more linear fashion. Now that we take in consideration recycling, we think in a more circular fashion and we like to call it cradle to cradle. In the preliminary study of this knife, we took in consideration only the phase going from cradle to gate for the absence of data coming from the consumer phase. This means that we calculated all impact from the extraction of the material until the knife leave in the factory or the workshop where it's made. To calculate the impact of this knife, we had to make a bunch of assumptions based on literature and we used EcoInvent to run the calculations. We assumed that the knife is made in Germany with Chinese plastic traveling more than 8,000 kilometers and the steel blade is made in Switzerland traveling 566 kilometers to the production facilities. After running all calculations for this knife that Mattia likes so much, we found that it emits 0.116 kilogram of CO2 equivalent. Okay, Francesco, thank you very much. This number is super useful. 0.116 kilograms of CO2 for each of these knives, which of course sounds like very little. However, if you multiply that by millions and billions of families, this number quickly add up. And actually, Francesco was super nice to run some numbers 
on Europe. So as of today, in 2024 in Europe, we have 198 million households. And if we assume that each of them has six knives, that adds up to 1 billion knives only in Europe which equals to 62,000 kilograms of CO2 emissions and 29,000 tons of plastic, which to me seems quite an impact. Okay, but of course, at Precious Plastic, we like to stay positive and find solutions to problems. That's why we called our friend Thomas from Joan Plasto, a Precious Plastic workspace from Dresden, and asked him to turn this knife from good to the best. Hi everyone, so let's make a knife from recycled plastic. In order to make an open source knife, I had a look into different blades you can get. After measuring and redesigning them into the CAD software, I designed the handle with an ergonomic shape and also enough space for bigger blades. For the open source mold, it was a goal to be able to insert different blades people can get and to have multiple cavities. With a handle weight of 25 gram, we are able to inject three knives with precious plastic machines, so 75 gram in total. On the blade side of the mold, I designed pockets for 3D printed inserts to get ready for different blades. On the nice CNC mold, we also got the precious plastic name and the recycling code milled in. To prepare the mold, you need to slide the inserts on the blades and put them into the mold. You can use blades up to 2 cm wide. We also ordered 1000 high quality blades with the precious plastic branding you can also order at the bazaar. Next step is to close the mold and make sure the blades fit the spots and are aligned. Prepare your injection machine with the shredded plastic waste flakes and inject it fast and hold the pressure for about 30 seconds. Now demold it, make the afterwork and enjoy your knife. Here you go, Mattia. Thank you, Thomas. This knife already looks so much better. But now let's go back to Francesco and understand whether this knife actually cuts emissions. Okay, these knives perform already so much better. As you can see from the process flow diagram, what Thomas from Joan Plastic did is as simple and efficient as it gets. This new design helps to cut knife emission in half from 0.116 to 0.064 kg of CO2 equivalent. You can find the full report that we made for this knife in the link below. Oh, and by the way, if you want to drastically improve the impact of this knife, you should do like Mattia and clean it on your clothes. Okay, massive, massive shout out to Francesco, super useful data. If you want to learn more about his work, make sure to check out gfactory.com. Okay, so each of these knives actually cut 50% of the CO2 emission in the making, which is totally great. Plus, they look really awesome. However, I'm not a pro, and I really wanna know from an expert in the field whether or not these knives could make it onto the market. So I asked my friend Fabrizio from Magese, an award-winning restaurant that was named the most sustainable restaurant in Toscana in 2024, what he thinks about these knives. Tredono, Chuck. <laughs> Ciao a tutti, sono Fabrizio Marino, sono lo chef di questo bellissimo ristorante che è Magese. Per il mio ristorante che ha un tenore molto classico, ma un'idea innovativa, sono perfetti perché uniscono la tradizione alla innovazione. In occasione di questo incontro stiamo sviluppando dei piatti proprio verte sulla sostenibilità. E allora perché no non servire una mise en place per i clienti così rivoluzionaria. In questo coltello dove trovo il design così un po' anni 80, molto accattivante e non è stato tralasciato niente, non è stata tralasciata la qualità della lama e poi lo sviluppo appunto della, della forma, della presa del manico. Io lo trovo molto divertente. Nel nostro piatto sostenibile questo sarà la, lo strumento per essere mangiato. Ok, so we are coming to the end of this video and it looks like that we managed to create a knife that actually cuts emissions in its making. I'm incredibly thankful for all the people that helped this project, starting of course from Thomas designing this beautiful knife, Francesco gathering all the data allowing us to say that it actually cuts 50% of its emissions, and Fabrizio testing it out in real life to see what people say. And I almost feel like I'm hitting you through the screens. Hey Mattia, how can we get our hands on these knives? And it's quite simple. You can either simply buy them on Joan Plasto's store on the bazaar. Otherwise, if you are into making or recycling, you could 
make it yourself, you could recycle it yourself. We made a step by step how to guide with all the technical drawings and everything you need to recycle this knife yourself and help us cut emissions. Okay, thank you for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao!